About 1975, I designed a new boot knife. It took me two years to get it made because my concept was that it be one piece of steel from butt to tip. You see, this, all of this is drop forged. I tried to make it in the United States. I could not find anyone willing to drop forge the blanks, which I could then take to a knife company and have ground. So I went to England. I tried there. Finally, I went to Germany and I found a modern sized company, smaller than Boker, smaller than Puma, Anton Wingen. And I went in and they said, no, we, we can't do that because it's hollow ground on both sides. And I said, you make straight razors? They said, oh, yes. I said, straight razors back to back. And the shop manager went out to the shop and he came running back in saying, we can do that. And Erica Dahman was running that company. And from 1977 until about 1997, they made these knives for me. We started selling them at $39.95. By the time we got to the end, they were at a hundred dollars. Erica died and they could no longer make the knives. Now, in addition to the Sting 1, we made a larger version we call the Sting 2. And we made a number of models, all steel, that we call the Sting 1A. And this is a black chrome finish. We did it in a gold chrome. We did it in simply polished that looked like chrome plate, but was not. And we did a hundred of them in Damascus steel. Now the polished and black were selling on eBay for over $300 each. And this was selling at about the same money until I came out with the Sting 3 which we make in Taiwan. Now, before we did this, the Sting 1A in various colors, I licensed Columbia River to make the Sting 1A and they make it in carbon steel with a black powder coat. Now, you can tell the difference between the two knives. This is still selling on eBay for about $200. And this one sells for considerably less. But it has a very interesting sheath Molded plastic, snaps into place. It has leg straps 
ankle straps and arm straps with Velcro. Now, if you take those off, then you can put a belt through here or you can put it on a molly configuration on your combat vest and carry it upside down if you like. These can be found occasionally in the cutting edge or on eBay. The same for this. Why did you uh, decide to partner with Columbia River to make the, the... Well, I'd been dealing with Columbia River since they came out with the KISS. I had talked to Columbia River when they first went into business, but they told me they were too small to do business with us. And then when they had the KISS, they invited Goldie and I to come and talk to them at the SHOT Show in Las Vegas. Goldie and I sat down and she looked at the KISS and the KISS was available with a serrated edge and a non-serrated edge. And Goldie shocked everybody else at the table by saying, we'll take 5,000 of that one and 5,000 of that one. And the KISS was a huge success. It took us a year to sell the entire 10,000 knives, but seldom we did. And we've worked with Columbia River ever since. So when I wanted somebody to make this knife, I went to them. And they do quite well. So this is a, a 1970s, late 70s design, still selling. Forty years later, God help us. Sometime in the late 1980s, I had a man come in the store and tell me that he had been working in Uganda as a CIA agent and Somebody informed him that he was about to be arrested. He had a silver one of these, the Sting 1A, and he told me he threw the sheath away, put the knife in his loafer with his foot on top of it, and when they arrested him, he sat in the corner of the cell, which he said was otherwise occupied with cannibals, and kept them at bay with this knife and with that knife in front of him. And he said the next day, when his people came and got him out of jail, he considered himself really fortunate to still be alive. 